Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbuzz TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. In this video, I want to try to help you if you find you run into the common problem of having your mixes to sound too bright, thin and sometimes annoyingly harsh. A problem that many new engineers face every day. Most people will try to compensate this by adding more low end and that in some cases is a solution. Some mixes sound bright because they have weak low end, but sometimes the low end is not the problem. And when trying to add low end to compensate for harsh and brittle sounding mixes when the low end is already enough, not only doesn't solve the problem of the harshness, but it also adds the way too low end one. So before we keep on going with this subject, I want to say that what I'm about to propose here is only my opinion. It's a technique that I use and find effective for myself. It's not dogma. You try it, if it improves your mixes, use it, if not, leave it. If you read the title, you know I'm about to show you a free tape emulation plugin that you didn't even know you had and how that might help you solve the harshness problems in your mixes. And I know a lot of you will be very disappointed when I tell you that that plugin is a simple low pass filter. Yep, you heard me right, a simple low pass filter. Stay with me for a second. Most analog gear in general and tape in particular have a natural high end roll off, especially with multiple passes for tape the high frequency loss can in some cases end up being not too subtle. When computers weren't around, we were recording to tape and that was the norm. And many pieces of gear and processor were invented to try to bring high end back and reduce the noise at the same time because all the gear that we used at that time had that natural roll off of the high end. Today we record to hard drives for most independent artists and home studios with no outboard gear at all. And converters today are very true to the source, which means there's absolutely no high frequency loss, no matter how many tracks we record. So while back in the day, the gear and the media, the tape, were sort of doing a low pass filtering work for us, the gear and the recording techniques we use today don't. They print to the hard drive pretty much exactly what we give them, and today's track count is stupidly high. Therefore, we end up with dozens of tracks that have a lot of information in the very top end of the spectrum that builds up. Now, obviously, this is not the only reason because we hear harsh mixes left and right. Mixing skills is the main reason, of course, excessive use of plugins, excessive use of processing in general, like saturation everywhere aliasing and of course mixing trends where the bright mixes appear louder so everyone wants to be louder and brighter than the next guy but among all the other reasons the fact that we leave so much information in the very high end of all the tracks could definitely be a factor high end that extends up to 20k and above and while that is surely part of a modern sound to leave that open on every track can cause problems so what is the advice Think about this, contrast is what makes something bright or dark, isn't it? If everything is bright, nothing is bright. So I'd invite you to try to do this. Pick your brightest element in the mix. Listen to the rough mix with all the elements playing and decide which elements are going to be the two or three key elements that are going to be the brightest in the mix. Might be a vocal and a hi-hat, might be a guitar and a snare, might be some synth and background vocals. You decide based on the song and your guts. Once you picked these elements, open a low-pass filter on every other channel and apply whatever roll-off you feel appropriate. Could be a gentle 6 dB per octave at 20k or 15k or it could be a steeper slope. Don't be afraid to try 12 dB per octave or 18 most likely you want to use a gentle one since you're putting it on every track. Every track, but those two or three elements that you want to be the brightest in the mix. If you mix with groups, you can do this directly on groups, for example, if you don't want to do it on every single track. That will work only if you don't decide that only an element, for example, like hi-hats, is going to be the brightest and not the whole drum bus. Hope it makes sense. Anyway, once you've done this, once you put the low pass filter on everything, start mixing and do everything else like you would normally. If you want to boost, let's say, 10K on one of the elements where you have the low pass filter on, do so. 
Mix normally. You don't have to avoid boosting high ends on things at this point. But every once in a while, play your mix and make sure that nothing else is brighter than those elements you picked earlier. Unless, of course, during the course of the mix you feel like changing them. Point is, you will be surprised how little it takes to make a mix sound bright. It only takes few key elements to give you the perception that your mix is open and airy. But doing it this way, you kind of emulated the behavior that tape and analog gear has, at least one aspect of it. And you don't have to fight harshness everywhere because everything has a ton of hyper-extended highs. Because trust me, it's a lot easier to make a dull mix sound brighter than to remove harshness from a mix that is too bright. I personally tend to always land a little darker than I would on my mixes, and I, I rather open it up with two bus EQ or a mastering if I'm mastering my own mixes. And this technique will most likely be more effective for those of you who don't record much in the way of real instruments and real uh, musicians. Because, well, when you record real instruments, supposedly you inject the right amount of a high end from the get go, and you shouldn't have much in the way of too much extended high end buildup. But if you use a lot of samples and virtual instruments, they always have a lot of high end because since the brain perceives bright things as better and louder, manufacturers tend to make the virtual instruments like that because that way when you hear them in solo, you go, wow, this virtual instrument sounds awesome. But you use 10 instances of that and you end up with a shitload of hyper extended top end information that doesn't do any good to your mix. But still, for real recorded material, this can be effective as well. Something to try, if anything. Also, another thing to consider is this. We get used to brightness. And two things happen. First, our ears get fatigued pretty fast. So we don't hear high-end information that much over time. And we keep cranking and cranking EQs on the high-end. And second, once we start our rough mix, if that is already pretty bright, it is extremely difficult to go back to a darker version of it. Even if that would sound objectively better, our brain perceived the brighter one as better. So it's very tricky, it's a matter of psychoacoustic perception. So try it. Put a gentle low pass filter on every track, but few key elements of your choice, and make those your reference for all the other elements. And as usual, don't do anything by default. Mice is just an advice, another tool in your box to use if it works. So simply give this technique a try. If it makes your mix better, stick with it. If it doesn't, leave it. And this might work on some mixes and totally suck on others. So you be the judge, okay? Nothing by default, that's the rule. So just to give you a quick example, I have this mix here. that you heard me using uh, other times. And I have my groups, drum bus, bass out, guitars, background vocals, effects, and lead vocal. So for the sake of simplicity here, I'm showing you the only on the main groups low pass filter technique. And what you do is simply open a channel strip. It could be an EQ, it could be anything. You only need a low pass filter. And as you can see, I have one on each group and let's open them all and take a look. For example, here I have the drum bus is open all the way. So this is one of my brightest element. Then I have the bass and I have a low pass filter of 15K. Then I have the guitar bus and I have a low pass filter of 12K. Then I have my background vocals bus and I have a 14k low pass. Then I have my effects bus and I have another 12k low pass filter and the lead vocal which is completely open. So my lead vocal and my drums are the brightest element. You might not perceive a huge difference when you run these very gentle filters but they make a difference at the end. Because, first of all, you don't have to boost that much high-end on the bright elements to make them stand out. And second, you don't have extended top-end build-up. 
So this is just an example, just to give you an idea. This is it for this video. I hope it was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. If you try this technique, let me know how it goes. If you like the video, please don't forget to click the like button. Support Mixbuzz TV by sharing the videos on your social media and forums. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.